Slow miles are better than no miles. Even better are slow, smiley miles. Doesn't those no smiley miles? Ronan's little alpine dream. It's late May 2019. The dust from the local elections has settled and I'm rolling down the once opaque road on my bike exhilarant with the wind roaring in my, into my face. The car is coming up towards me, driving slowly. I'm almost in a summer mood. If cars could display emotion, and I suppose I do. As I go past the car, a part of the dense green hedgerow strikes out at me. My eyes can't avoid the black. It's totally burnt out. A massive fire had obviously engulfed both sides of the tall hedgerow. The road is scarred black. Then I see the layers of tacky flowers thrown into the dead void on one side of the road. I had forgotten about the murder here a few weeks ago or so. And now I can picture the whole scene. It's sad to see a pleasant place scarred for me. Thankfully nature is too old for scars and will grow back fondly. So if I live long enough, I will. One day Come down the hill and not think of that grim death. Make a few wonders about that young man's last few moments before the blaze at Walsestown. Him alone along the M1 into a lonely place. Hopefully he can stay here forever. Safe in the crowd until the car goes off the main road and makes a turn up rolling as little at Walsestown. He has never been here before. He does not know where he is. The place is black and empty. Nobody is coming to save him. He's gone from a busy motorway to an empty black space in one minute. Roland's little alpine dream, I call this spot. You can pretend you're in the Alps psyching up. Up under the cover of dense trees, how innocent a star you are to me. An obscure place. It came forward. It's a main headline in the news all across the country. Let's go back a few years to year. When I was younger. Coming off the M1 motorway towards my hometown of Alrigan. This was the first sign I would see was a place called Wasselstown. Thousands upon thousands every day drive past that spot. Countless times and never even think to drive up that road. I would look down that road that there were dozens round about that had only two options go back or go forward and wonder about that road that disappeared up a hill under a dense canopy of trees. Thousands upon thousands have wood will soon done and do so drive past that spot countless times. And never drive up that road. The same experience for me was felt again. For me back on the old Dublin Belfast Road. A few kilometres from Labregan. A signpost to a place called Bog in the Rain. I've been looking at that sign. Once rusty old arrow. Now modern and sleek white. Since I was five years old. Back then the world was so huge and small to me. This was a strange place. Back then, road signs had this peculiarity trait of the fractions of inches after the miles corner smallly into the white of the signs. They made it look like someone had painted the black paint on. 
And so I was always perplexed by the magic magnitude. Sure, bogs are outwards into the west of Ireland. Depth and reason mean little to a five year old bog of the ring. One and one slash five miles could just as well be 100 miles. It had to be in the Midlands of Ireland, in my little mind of miles away. Or could be or not be less than an hour drive away. And I finally had the sovereignty to discover the place. I learned it was a three minute jog off the Dublin Road when I took up running. It's queer to discover a bog in Dublin. Snow neglected and ignored and unknown. The last place in my youth that took my mind into the grand green bewilderment of the Irish countryside was a little road that came out of Bad Riggan town centre and went up a massive hill over somewhere out there in the green bewilderment was a place called Knoll which on the signpost it was three and three slash four miles away. My parents for years had kept me on this narrow passage running from Dublin and Drogheda. I never went further west than Swords. My childhood jaunts were all inside this boundary. Places like Malahide and Donovan Park the beaches from Laytown to Morantown, mass on a Saturday after a shopping in Drotha, looking at Plunkett's head, or even worse, late mass on a Sunday in Skerries, with the dread of school tomorrow hanging over for me. Both my parents were at Dublin City folk. I don't know the 24 siblings they were the only ones to live beyond the vicinity of the suburbs of the city centre and so naturally gravitated in journeys back towards the vicinity of Dublin. I had almost weekly drives into places like Artane, Binglis, Canberra, Glasnevin, Ballymun, Drumcram, Mirach and so on and beyond. On and on I went to visit cousins, grandparents, uncles and aunts, east time, northbound on the drive back home. After coming past a sign directing to a place called Bally Bottle, I would look out the window at the green wonder. Even in the pitch dark, I would look out into it and wonder. The mystic of the darkness just made it all more lowering. On the return home, I'd often be sure we'd made a wrong turn, hoping I was right in the imagination of the night, where left turns could become right, wishing we could disappear into the dark. Always, I could feel that countryside out there, in the beyond, calling me. It had imprinted upon my mind. The 1990s grew up. The small diminished into the big. The rose developed, and so on, and so on it went. The M1, a major road in the 90s, became Demuniated to or 131 or something. Driven down by a newly built motorway M1. Held sternly towards the strong voice up arm of the M50. Flung firmly around the city of Dun Dublin. Everything vast started becoming small. The giant big hill leading out Bad Brigham that clared to lead to the place called the Knoll, that smaller 
Things change. Tribunals began. And house in the state spread out as Mosney Holiday Park became an asylum centre and the Celtic Tiger Pyramid Scheme started roaring. And suddenly in 2008 it all went bust. All the while, meanwhile, in between all of this, that grand sensation of what's out there in the great green bewilderment was felt numerous times by me as I grew up into it. Growing up as a country bunkin with Dublin born parents and loads of Dublin relatives, this meant as before mentioned, frequent drives into the outskirts of Dublin City along the narrow corridor of the old Belfast M1 road. Along the way my eyes were puzzled upon signposts. The places like Ballybottle or Bog of the Ring that intrigued me towards an older Ireland. I wanted to discover these places. And then when later in life, after rusty mile signs with fractions became new EU metric signs, and the N1 relented M1 Norway flyovers going nowhere but where the mind could imagine. This gave me an urge to discover that countryside out there. The imprint on my mind needed to be filled. I had to go exploring. I had to make the journey west. I had to go out to a place called Valley Bottle. So in 2009 I bought a bike and Lycra and with some effort grand green expanse surrounding me my whole life over up to me. Up and down I went, winding this way and that way, discovering. There was a little hamlet called Argart in Mead, with an only fool's and horse's car outside the local pub, a place called Commune. And all the signs directing towards it just have the word moon. Fast as I go up through Garrison and down that town towards Ashbourne. Just like the old IRA. The Bengal Brigade on their bikes. It's no shame most of those roads around there are unchanged after a century. It's nice to see history coming down towards you. When you look up at the old tall trees. Only to see them as saplings. In momentous events. I went through it all exploring. Back roads and main new roads, little dense drags and big steep hills. All those with so many views of rewards and feeling exhilaration beyond any comparison. Where the air and delirium of going down a newly discovered hill at 50 kilometers an hour. It was like 200 kilometers an hour with the wind roaring through you. Getting thinner and thinner every day. The muscles start to bulge and veins in you under your tight skin become visible. Like you're in a rocky montage. If I could go back, I'm really one moment in my life. 
one moment of my life. It will be the transformative experience back in May 2009. When I took up cycling, this was also the time of 2009 local elections. Local elections are all peculiar things for cyclists. All things for anyone, I suppose. I like them compared to the more rigid general elections. Local elections have the charm of parochial flavours. Being stuck in one parish, there must be a bore though. Looking at the same faces over and over again. But well, I'm a cyclist now. In 2009, the car can't just escape into the feeling of nowhere like me exploring the realm of my land, finding and winding through every little nook and cranny, up and down every little wee back road, and into around, fleeing beyond towards flaunting, daunting hillscapes. Green is always on the horizon, in this pedalling motion of movement. The world is opened up, and the local election is on, and I'm out cycling through it, and the soon to be very frequent thunderstorms, and so called scattered showers that drench me every single day from around mid June onwards. Whether it was Slane or Dunlear, and I guess in garrison of swords, I was sheltering under a hedgerow at some point that summer as hard rain pelted down. Back to the month of May, it's a sleigh in the youth of summer. The holds of cold harsh reality. The sobers the rush of words. Being based in Barrigan right toward The Mead Dublin border. I can traverse across several different electoral wards in several minutes on my bike. Briskly moans. Sleep from one moment to the next. The faces and names change with the parishes like graveyards. I go up a hill onto Grogra. And down the hill past Balscadden, and suddenly all the familiar faces swelling down to me on the posters have changed. I'm in the villas of Swan now, and one guy on the poles really stands out. He instantly strikes up my good, responsive senses. I know him. This guy has a devil in him. He's one of the Hitlers of the world. Something is reflecting. That capture. Like looking at a mirror. If you like yourself. He's a charming, good looking young guy called James Carey. It looks in theory like he's a Fina Gale candidate. He's an imposter or poster has copied almost exactly the blue style of Fine Gael you formerly used back in 2009. Look closely though, and it does mention that he's running as an independent. There's something about this James Carey. A glint in his eye. A malice good natured smile. I know he's trouble, but I like it. I like trouble. I know whatever happens, more is to come. The Kerry name had a familiarity to it. I remember a local shop called Kerry's in Bob Riggan. They closed soon after the Bridge Throne. Sorry, excuse me. The Bridgestone Tire Warehouse became a little store. Back in 2003, this was after Ireland opened up to Eastern Europe. One day you're buying Heinz beans, Ren's bread, 10 packs of John Lair Blue, 
desperate down bars. Someone's chocolate ice cream foot fetish. A chocolate shaped lump of flavoured sugar, bubble gum, candy cigarette sticks. The taste horrible on purpose, bland crisp, the best of which. Having the brief water of your line. A frog of chocolate. What else only you know? All oh, in some grotty shop being served by a goofy, sulking faced Irish woman called Susan or Sarah or Shannon. Or someone who's sure she's too good to work here. Then before you know it, you're in little. Being served by a blonde blonde Russian woman called Luga or Lena with a pricky chest and grand protruding bottom. Buying good cheap French wine with packs of mutton chops from New Zealand at a reasonable price to go with it and Italian panani bread. I find it hard to believe Little has been here almost 20 years. Is this really it that long? Back I wander into my mind. I must be getting the dates wrong somehow or just getting old, yes. Little opened in what was a tire store when I was about 19. Oh, 15 or 20 years, who cares? I've passed since those days buying cheap Polish beer with tall plain Sarah, a neighbour, working on the checkout. You could buy cigarettes a little back then. Afterwards, knacker drinking on the coast, no matter what the weather. So much has changed. In tiny little details. History painting. Doing the most briskly paint strokes, slight by slight, stroke by stroke, stealthily, till the whole scene is marveled into a perfect indifference. It's all a capitalistic gimmick. Grey clouds were only tiny spots of light spec through. Back to 2009, in the end it came to nothing for James Carey. On the seven recount, history just about avoided itself again in embarrassment. His attempt to become an elected representative, representative was thwarted by the establishment. The Gardaí arrested him at the Holden station during the early morning of election day on very spurious grounds for firing a pellet gun at a woman's bottom with precision years before after which he had fled to Wales to avoid capture. It was a farcical. James Carey had Canvas at our house not so long ago, later or earlier, it did not matter. The thing was set up. During the day of the election, the news of the event spread like a fire. As it would, they know, it showed the code throughout the village of someone casting doubts down into the pools. Upon thoughtfulness, where most of the votes for that war came from, and that was the end of that. A few hundred votes was the unjust in was the unjust difference. He lost on like the fifth recount. The posters from two thousand and nine local election came down. And I forgot almost all their names and faces. The elected or unelected. Even James Carry soon dissipated from my memories, and so I went on, and so it goes on. Let time roll on to 2008. There is so much I missed out on. The stress factor, the dog working by, the crashes, the curses, and all the horrible rain laden with pain. 
I forgot to mention those days I did computer science at DIT Kevin Street. When in September I could always tell when it was about to rain. The electric sense of pain, my stress factor would ping me. And I always got soaked. Usually nearly and around Stevens Green. The years rolled on and I kept cycling through them. Lance Armstrong came out of retirement. Nearly reward our yearly passes on a mission against cancer. Only to get berated by Paul Kimmage in the so called cancer of cycling and Lance disamused plan to slice and dice through the whole cycling season, doing every race in the calendar, sloping the skunks of Giro d'Italia, enduring the grass into the Tour de France. So he up the weather of Ireland and unaware riding towards me in some strange irony coming later into this is the Kimmich fella. Shooting me filthy for smoking a cigarette up a street in the village town after my one and only race in Simulan after I dropped the whole bunch going up the hill in Simulan so warps of time become mangled strangely. We're a cold spell. Duration came within the latter days of the recession. I remember leaving Robo's garage after a drinking session in early October and seeing frost on the ground. I said to my own dead friend, Shimbo, it's going to be a bad winter. The first of my bad predictions I made that came true to him, who's me. Me and you, obviously. That Christmas just glittered with frost and every day the sun just glittered up to a little speck, little spots in billions of speck of places. A crystal cathedral, weak cold light, shining brightly, illuminating the land. Sun and ice holding a handshake of friendship. Christmas winter of 2008 was high pressure, dragging in cold Arctic air. Clear view skies, day after day, with unbroken sun and the most severe frost, holding on within the reach of each night. I tried cycling in it and slipped and crashed. In a dangerous spot going up a junction that led towards the motorway, retreating home car had smashed into a hedgerow. The size of the roads were ice rinks. The car is aggressively beat. From my refusal to endanger myself as I took up a tiny space of road beyond the icy patch. No was the hard shoulder. January 2009, hardened to life. And in, in this frequency of days, the weather withered down to cold rain, awaiting a renewal. The summer of 2009 was very wet. It rained every single day, from Gore to Ballingarry, from Newry to West Fork. Being called to Ennis, loud to Upley, it was all the same, a scatter of scatter showers coming in torrential. Coming in in torrential intervals. They were generally short showers though, and I would often sit them out under hedgerows eating chocolate bars. Still in discovery mode, cycling to and from Navin. Cologne, Slane, and the Gesson, the Lear. I could always find shelter. Expanding my world each day of, two, of 2009 that summer. I would, I would find every road I could and would spend Five to six hours a day out cycling, reaching out. Know. 
Uh, it's actually on a cake there on the night of August for the last tour of Ireland. The last day, a day of exceptional rain. He abandoned before attempting again St. Patrick's Hill in Cork City. Almost 20 years since he last raced up the <coughs> two months. As a nobody before he won the world championships. I watched him used in my bedroom. The highlights on a small calico television. My fractured foot hurt a lot that day. On my back to the wall, the cold rain dotting on my window, doing the same. Ribbing always, all across the country, all the way to Cork. It went belting against the windows. Happy days when the eerie snow came down, and in the silent white blanket my border collie got lost, chasing hares in the golf course. That day, walking the dog past the fields of Argullan, or modern English Argullan Park, the snow started and the birds in unison with nature just stopped at about 4.40 p.m. in November. The snow of 2009 made the golf course I run through look like something from Finland. The local park, Bargillan people were snowboarding down the hill. Out past the leak I hit my spot. My reckoning upon black eyes slipping before retrieve or reprieve upon the point the words have no imagination. Hastily insights their delights amuse the mind as you witness the fall of the time. And then smash the ground, cracking my hip. Going into a fragment of time with long repercussions of pain, it's a weird sensation to be. Grab down onto the road as you watch the wheel before you slip out of control. I go home into an ordeal of easterly winds, red faced, into the harsh fresh breeze licking my wounds again. I stay out of the saddle the whole way home, my fracture hip in agony. Won't let me be seated. A strange love relationship with cycling was developing. A few weeks before, in mid late December, aggressive drivers at Hong Kong beaked at me on the drop of the road where a fire truck was taking a car out of a ditch. For me, having taken the adocious decision to avoid the black ice glaciating from the hard shoulder. And this was just after I had slipped going up and inclined over a pass over and smashed my shoulder. I was learning the rootlessness of the big car society and how to survive it. The singularity of cycling, the smallness against the bigness. And the little passive given. And so it passes. And on and on it goes, happening in little snippets, the cold spell wintered fast. Tents are erected under the central bank as part of the 99% movement as the global recession goes on. Dates are rolled up. I'm back at the IT doing a springboard course. A computer game programming. In the late evenings, it's November, we're having a smoke in the courtyard of Kevin Street, DIT. And a redhead guy named Paul, who doesn't smoke, remarks about how it was snowing this time of year last year. Later, Paul comes in, drinking coffee, smelling of whiskey. It's a screaming at the lecture for the slide. He showed title with a joke about necrophilia. What the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? And never comes back after that. 
And whenever someone mentions him afterward, someone shouts out, Come out, Paul, we know you're out there in the hall, listen to us. And onwards it goes, and on and on, as it goes. I go back to go to start another course, again, out near Sandy Mount. This time studying, studying electronics. To avoid a job placement scheme, the unemployed are being coerced into after the recession. It's 2011 or 2012, the years are mingling. Back to education allowance seems much more lowering than job seekers allowance. The massive unemployed are being put into bright orange jackets, clearing out plants and doing pretty much nothing. A friend of mine says they are trying to embarrass people into getting a job. I'm not so cynical. Until I mentioned it to Robo, he burst out laughing brightly. The whole... It's the whole who those people are. Jesus. They really make them stick out in the orange jackets. Spot on observations I miss. Then it continues on this flow. Lance Armstrong gives a flying and makes a, his confession. In 2013, I continue on in life's frames and I progress from that. Another course near Sandy Mount, back to DIT again. My third time there, or second time, I don't know. The calamity of it is instant. Day one, and I'm sitting in the middle of an electronics room. With the computers around me, I'm middle aged now, almost 30 years old now. I take a swig from my bottle of water, and the teacher, so called lecturer, turns and scales on me. No drinking in the classroom. I've been in secondary school 10 years ago and here I am right back in it being treated like a child. I knew then in an almost instant I was done with formal education. The confirmation came when the math teacher lecture turned into a rote learning class. With the teacher walking around the, the room, the class classroom, looking at our work. Look at primary school. The math was beyond beneath me and I was clueless. And when the teacher came to me, I just said I was working on Goldbach's conjecture. The place of numbers moving things numb me. Numbers can go up and down and around, I don't care anymore. I deviated from the pointless, pathetic task of moving numbers around the page. Simple circuits can do this mathematics I learned. A capacitor and inductor can do the derivative mathematics. It's making my mind spin every night in my attempt to catch up. I want more from life, from this than little numbers. That was the end of my formal education. After 20 years, I vowed to do no more courses of that. Once in DIT, when my course abandoned, I went to the library every day in those months, spending hours reading day after day, I learned more than any exam result could re ever reveal. Lots happened that year in DT. Like the time I got a text from an Iraqi girl. How did she get my number? That must have been the first text I ever got. Asking me to come to college to help her with computer coding, an hour train into Dublin, three hours teaching her, and even 
the most trivial things of coding, like a new statement. She couldn't get her head around it. She still passed the exam. The progress on to the next year. I do, of course did not. I was back in the dull queue again. It's now early May 2014 and the college year is over. My results come out and I tear them up at the top of Bellystown Hill and throw the fragments into the Irish countryside. Someone finds them. Though I use my results as their numbers every month in the Euro Millions Lottery. The years have read on by feeling into a bit free of it. I kept on cycling through the years. The 2014 Giro de Battaglia came to Ireland. The biggest race after the Tour de France, it, it was like Christmas for me. As it came right through my hometown, Barbrigan, on its way to Dublin. The rain was the clear winner of that day. A peloton of clouds with sporadic, frequent rain telling the story that it was always the moment as the race came out of Belfast towards Newry. Memory fruitfully, jubilantly blossomed up into the happenings. I remembered into the collective as we sorted ourselves into places. Me buying wine at Sue Radio at 1 pm as a bemused African woman queried the staff who told her the moment TV cameras, helicopters were coming, the roads were getting closed soon. Walking back home through the forming crowds, on the town centre square, as dense clouds replicated the atmosphere above, looming up on the horizon, nature in itself was making a sense of chase, a sense of time for once in my life, having energy. I reached home and turned it on, tuning on, living into telly, pure imagery in one space. The wind was bringing the weather in the same direction of the race towards me. I sat back and watched. The clock is ticking down. It's raining and done and dark right now. I can see it on my television. It's dry at the same time in Bob Riggin. The same strange sensation you rarely feel. It's grey and drab and drier right now, but it's lasting right now here in Bob Riggin. I can see it out my window. The race races on. To Julian sound. Training again there on the television. The dry hair as I leave my house to go out to meet the race and the weather on the television. And finally it meets me. It's all coming together, colliding into one spot. Like that cartoon strip from Calvin Holmes we looked at so many times. That thing called Telly, my oldest friend, who brought billionaire Donald Trump into my living room when I was seven years old, watching Prince of Bel Air after skipping neighbors for dinner before having headaches with the peculiarity of going round the twist while drinking Ribena, which was the invisible marker between the grown up adult shows. And the childish cartoons that started my daily routine after school were all coming out of the box. The real and unreal were finally meeting up. Now, an augmented reality, of course, and my real reality are finally meeting up for once in my life. At the exit of my estate onto the scary road, the rain is belting down again. On the west, and I run for cover under the wall of the Dublin Belfast Railway. Tick tock goes the clock, and soon everything has converged into my history. 
the home of helicopters above, signals his arrival. I'm now living in the television spot. I just was. Or so I like to believe. Under the weather, and I spot the goal of action. The race is blurring, coming towards me into focus. Four down riders, grunting and grinding, grimace their way through into my sense of self. Not taking much comfort from my clapping with pink gloves. As they went on by without notice. Then the rest followed, the peloton. A bunched up hunch of a hundred or two hundred bodies or more huddled up fighting into a tight space. With a low flying helicopter daring with a roar above, chopping above my field. My field, the field of dreams. And then the sore sight of caravans of cars falling behind. Bend down to tie your shoelaces as I did. And you'd almost miss a pass by. That was the end of that. It was over. Time moved on. Soon after that event, the local election focus went back up. Some new faces smiling at me, some old faces still looking young. Looking the exact same, actually. As they did back in 2009, why are they allowed to use the same pictures from years ago? I asked myself, it's stupid. Seems silly. And I continue on growing up into it without the possibility of judgment of the world I move into. Anyway, the 2014 local election was of little interest to me. So I didn't actively follow it or pay much attention to the results. What I do remember do though is a neighbour of mine was running for the Labour Party. He was also my former geography teacher. A week or two before he was smiling down at me on the poles, I had noticed I was starting to walk by him. Every day on the street. It seemed to me at the time he had taken up leisurely walking as some sort of exercise. It turned out his main election strategy was to walk up and down the main streets of the town all day saying hello to people. The thing was though, if you didn't know his name, you wouldn't know he was the guy on the poster. He was just a small, unassuming guy who just blended into the crowd. People thought he was probably just odd. I've seen it once before, looking at a bus window, going through Drunkrondra, when I saw Bertie Heron, how successful politicians have this gleam about them that makes them beam out into the world. I mentioned it briefly to be brightly to a friend in college once, Back at DIT and with brilliant Dublin glee, he instantly upstaged me. Really, yeah, I saw Tony Blair once, getting out of a car in O'Connell Street. He was going into Easton's, he really stood out from the crowd from everybody. They were always just drawn to him. In the end, he came nothing from a neighbour, former geography teacher, his diminutive stature, doing lacklustre campaigning, combined with his tainted Labour Party credentials, ensured he was not elected to Fingal County Council.
Over barren cabbage fields came a man wasted in time, worn down by a restless pursuit. Up he ran to a place called At Wit's End. After he got his breath back, he walked back down into the town centre of Lusk. It's March 2019 now, and the next local elections are looming. I'm out on my bike, grinding up and rolling down the hills of Mead. Still at it after almost 10 years. It's gotten lonely after about 80,000 kilometers. So I'm listening to the radio for some company. A live line show. On RTE. It's off with its iconic Sahili sounding music and Joe Duffy opens the show with the name James Carey a flood of memories pours up to remind me of what I knew then what I know now the 2009 election would not be the last time I hear James Jim Le Carey and literally of complaints from contractors and builders waiting on the line follows about this fella James Carey living up in Preston Hill near St Mullen. I'm literally on Preston Hill as I hear this after navigating through the school run no more details are needed for me to locate his house as we go up the hill there's a white van parked right now outside his house. I have this end of the usual suspects, Kyder so they moaned, come over me. A strange sensation when you notice something odd that you would never have noticed unless it was brought to your attention, even though you knew it was always there. White bands are always at this house doing work. The probable the scruffled white band man currently waiting outside his house makes me wonder. Maybe they're listening to it on the radio too, and so I go past the van, I point to my earphones, I st- and so I stick up my tongue for some strange reason. A minute later, the van drives past me and then stops a few meters hundred meters ahead of me. Now it strikes me why I intrinsically like the look of James Carey all those years ago. He looks similar to me. Has my glint like in his eyes. Same face, personality type. And with the helmet I wear after the coke can incident obscure me I'm following instinct and thinking the worst death from mistaken identity as I come up to the rear of the van it drives off the biggest con man since John the con who featured on this show many years ago, says Joe Duffy. James has been on the rap mage for years, apparently, says Joe. Thank God, I say. James in his perfect individual self. Sense. Has stiffed many pockets and and purses of of Gumby in Ireland. Soon after that, the 2000 elections kicks off. On social media, the complaints flare up. Then the posters. I know that most of the complaints come from women. In Islamic cultures, they forbid depictions of you, the human form, on the basis that it's too provocative. That's why they only have uh, 
atoms in mosque where the minds are dwelling. That might explain something about the anger these posters posing provoke. A lot of them are ugly men. Power, even the aspiration of power, might be an unwelcome aphrodisiac. One person who wasn't running in the local elections was James Carey. He had made it clear on his Facebook page, along with numerous pictures of himself, always with his tongue up and smiling, that he would not be running. As he was beyond the medium, with bigger things on his mind. The international airport airport was opening soon <laughs> and Donald Trump was soon to be visiting his bar. Baron and Cabbage Fields came a man wasted in times worn down by a restless pursuit. Up he ran to a place called that Witch End. After he got his breath back he walked back down to the town centre of Lusk. It's March 2019 now and the next local elections are looming. I'm out on my bike, grinding up and rolling down the hills of Mead, still at it after almost 10 years. It's got lonely after about 80,000 kilometers, so I'm listening to the radio for some company. The live line show. It's off with his iconic Cecily sounding music and Joe Duffy opens the show with the name James Carey. A flood of memories pours up to remind me of what I knew then, what I know now, the 2009 election would not be the last I heard of James Jim Le Carey. A litany of complaints from contractors and builders waiting on the line follows about this fella. James Carey, living out in Preston Hill, near in Stamullen. I'm literally on Preston Hill, as I hear this, after navigating through the school run. No more details are needed for me to locate this house as I go up the hill. There's a white van parked right now outside this house. I had this end of the usual suspects Kaiser Sozing moment come over me. A strange sensation when you notice something odd that you would never have noticed unless it was brought to your attention. Even though you knew it was always there, white bands are always at this house doing work. The probable disgruntled white band man currently waiting outside the house makes me wonder. Maybe they're listening to it on the radio too and so as I go past the van I point to my earphones and I stick my tongue up for some strange reason. A minute later the van drives past me and then stops a few mere hundred or so meters ahead of me. Now it strikes me why I instringently liked the look of James Carey all those years ago. He's me. He looks similar to me. Has my glint like in his eyes. Same personality. And what the hell will they wear after the coke can incident? Obscuring me? I'm following instinct and thinking the worst. Death from mistaken identity. As I come up to the rear of the van, right as rear, it drives off. The biggest con man since John the Con, you featured on this show many years ago, says Joe Duffy. James has been on the rampage for years, apparently, says Joe. Thank God, I say. James in his perfect individual sense. 
of self has stiff many the pockets and purpose of Gumpin in Ireland. Soon after that, the 2019 local election kicks off. On social media, the complaints flare up. That of posters. I know as most complaints come from women. In Islamic cultures, they forbid depictions of the human form on the basis that it's too provocative. That's why they only have patterns in mosques for the mind to dwell in. That might explain something about the anger these imposing posters provoke. A lot of them are ugly looking men. Power, even the aspiration of power, might be an unwelcome aphrodisiac. One person who wasn't running in the local elections was James Carey. He had made it clear on his Facebook page with numerous pictures of himself, always with his thumb up and smiling, that he would not be running, as it was beyond the beneath him, with bigger things on his mind. The International Airport was opening soon, and Donald Trump was soon to be visiting his farm. Weeks of cycling through names again. Posters smiling down at me everywhere I go. No matter how rem remote. My boundary in this world of Ireland is about seven different wards. Each ward I go through has about ten or more people running. That's a lot of names and faces to remember in lots of little pockets of short spaces. A typical bike ride of, of Bob Riggan. I go down through Boscadden, over the river Delvin, border into Mead, past the village of Gormersdale, then continuing up north past Harry Barracks, a few clicks away from Mosney. In that short space, I go through four different wards in under two miles. That's a lot of smiles in a few mere miles. I like the posters though. They give me company. Out in the lonely countryside. It is comforting to have so many friends. The human face does not bother me. Local elections mark the passage of time. Unlike general elections, they are cyclical. They come around the clock. Maybe this regularity is the reason why on voting day I find myself drawn to walking around my local graveyard. All the different names on gravestones. Names I didn't know are Irish like. Crane and Wall. It reminds me of the local election posters. They're like a graveyard but with faces to go with the names. Unlike graveyards, the names change with the parish. Out on the side of the road, one of the election posters is Amusingly looking inwards towards the dead. After walking for a half hour through the vats around the very dead, I'm forced to realize I have to leave here to live. I buy my messages. This brings me to the beginning. Help your dad bring in the messages. Shouts my ma. Now we're back in the 1994 local elections. They drove around with megaphones. And 
So I made the way to the polling station. I click the boxes. I leave the building again. I hear the sound of time. A strange crescendo follows. We hear the celebrations of the victors. I feel all the highs and lows pass over the next few days. It's like erratic weather. The losers must remain moot. The longest interview of their life is over and the effort has left most of them with nothing. The noise rumbles away. And with that, the election is over. To do and not to do. The imposing posters come down in an instant. As quickly as they went up the poles, they came down the poles after the poles come in. As the months roll on, you find a few here and there in ditches smiling at you in a distant looking pose, often the losers in the folly, the grin, the sad, same. Like they haven't realised they had lost yet. Now I'm alone again with the cows out in the grand green expanse of the Irish countryside. I salute the cows and shout, Say hi! For no reason whatsoever, other than it seems acceptable in cohesion with bizarrely. I like the way they look at me when they do it. The cows are very reactive to it. Not sheep, not so much. <laughs> Only the bell can hear them. All my smiling friends have gone home. I'll live to see them again in five years' time. With some new faces and names to go with them. Some of the names will be gone, passed on to other things in life. I ring my bell on my bike at the sheep. They run flocking together into the fur. As I, uh, as I go, up I go. The less I sense. The less sense it makes picture of life. Whereupon the sheep stop, disperse, and start eating grass again. Doesn't mean anything, as I only purpose. Am I going somewhere? What next? I shout into the wilderness. Keep eating that grass.